I wanted to go to something that just happened before the broadcast, and that is one of the hostages who was released speaking. Hamas has released two Israeli civilians um, held hostage in Gaza. On Monday, a Hamas spokesperson said 79-year-old Nurit Cooper and 85-year-old Yochevet Lifshitz had been let go for humanitarian reasons. Um, Hamas shared video showing armed fighters releasing the elderly hostages to Red Cross officials just before the video ends. Yochevet Lifshitz reaches back to shake the hand of one of her captors, saying shalom, the Hebrew word for peace. Earlier today, uh, Yochevet Lifshitz spoke to reporters in Tel Aviv. Uh, she describes the scene where she was kidnapped. She was very critical of the Israeli government, uh, saying that the Hamas had um, uh, released fire balloons, as she described it, that the fields were burning for weeks before. Um, she was taken on a motorbike with two Hamas fighters, then walked for miles through what she called a kind of um, spider web of underground tunnels. Once in Gaza, Yochevet Lifshitz says her treatment improved. Her daughter, Sharon, who flew in from London for her release, translated her remarks to reporters. My mom is talking about coming there. When they arrived, they arrived into a large uh, hall in which about 25 hostages were gathered. And after a two or three hours, those hostages Five of them, she among Can them, were taken into a separate her. room. My mom is saying Can that they, they were very friendly towards Can them and that they took care of them, that they were given the medicine. <laughs> uh, that they were given they were given medicine and they were uh, treated. One of the men with them. Uh, had a badly injured from for, uh, from a motorbike accident on the way, and the paramedic was looking after his wounds. He was given uh, um, medicine and antibiotics. Uh, that the people were friendly. That they kept the place very clean. <laughs> We were very hurt by the fact that the IDF did not know. Where are the scapegoats? Uh, they warned us three weeks prior with people who came to the road and burned fields, sent incendiary balloons to burn our, to burn our fields, and the IDF did not address this seriously. Suddenly, on Saturday morning, when everything was quiet, there was a heavy bombardment of the communities. And with that, the masses infiltrated, blew up the expensive fence. Opened the gates of the kibbutz and entered in their masses. It was extremely difficult. I keep having those images in my mind. He's asking, why did you shake the hand of the Hamas terrorist in the visual? They were gentle with us. Our needs were supplied. My mom is saying that they treat them kindly and provided for them. That was 85-year-old Yochevet Lifshitz being translated by her daughter, Sharon. Um, Yochevet's husband, Oded, is still a hostage. Last week, the legendary Israeli journalist Amira Haas talked about Oded Lifshitz on Democracy Now! I have no idea how many people, how many of the hostages, some of them I, 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 uh, uh, I know their relatives. I know one of them who is uh, 85 years old and a, a very brave uh, journalist who in uh, Oded Lifshitz's name, I, I just realized it. He's 85. He, he was... Uh, in the 70s, he exposed the Israeli, the expulsion of Bedouins in the northern of Sinai. Uh, he exposed it in a, a series of articles. I know some people that are relatives of, as I, as I said, of friends of mine. 
So that's uh, Mira Haas, the legendary Israeli journalist, talking about Oded Lifshitz. He is still a hostage. His wife, as you can see, Yochevet Lifshitz, was just released. Rami Khouri, I was watching CNN earlier this morning, just as this press conference was happening, and the response right out of it, it was the host, Aaron Burnett, who is in Israel right now, said, clearly, she's voicing Hamas talking points. And when Yecheved said that um, the doctors came every two or three days and uh, gave them medicine, and if they didn't have the proper medicine, they would get some kind of replacement medicine, she said that proves uh, that Hamas is hoarding medicine because the Palestinians don't have it. Your response to Yecheved Lifshitz, what she said, she is a peace activist in Israel who is one of the hostages just released. Well, my response to, to, to her, but also to you, is, first, don't watch CNN in the morning if you want news about the Middle East. Uh, that's, that's, that's bad for your health, it's bad for your mind, and it's bad for your uh, 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 intake of serious, uh, accurate news and analysis. There are many other, much better sources around the world. Uh, mainstream American TV uh, is a catastrophe uh, in this respect. Uh, my reaction to the, to the uh, uh, Yehuda, Yehuda, I think her name is. You uh, have it. She, you know, this, you had it, yeah. She, she, rep she represents two things uh, to me, and I've spent my whole life um, in the U.S. and around the world interacting with very, very close Jewish friends who, who, who I've known all my life and, um, and uh, people in the Arab world and, and Europe and everywhere. And my reaction is that she represents probably the uh, essence, um, I think, of what makes Judaism uh, such a special um, um, religion. Uh, it's based on ethics, it's based on love, it's based on truth, it's based on respect uh, for God, uh, and it's based on the quest, as God told Moses to tell the Jews to tell the world, it's based on the pursuit of justice. Uh, uh, seek justice and only justice, uh, Moses said. Uh, so she, that all echoes in, in, in what she said. She was honest. Uh, she was uh, uh, friendly. Uh, she said the truth. We assume. I don't think she was, uh, you know, orchestrated or taught to say any of these things. Uh, the fight that Hamas has, that we all have, is not with Jewish people. It's with the Zionist movement, which became the State of Israel, which is widely recognized around the world as an apartheid uh, system. The second thing I recognize about her uh, comments is uh, how the Israeli defense system in the South completely collapsed, was totally incompetent. Um, and those towns, those settlements, the kibbutzim in the South, are mostly located on the ruins of Palestinian villages that were destroyed in 1947-48. There was about 500 Palestinian villages that the uh, Jewish fighters, before the declaration of the State of Israel, from late 1947 to May 48, uh, you had militant uh, Jewish groups carrying out terrorism, pogroms, um, uh, acts of uh, great violence to get the Palestinians out, and it succeeded. Uh, about 750,000 Palestinians were driven out of uh, Palestine before the declaration of statehood on May 15, 1948, Israeli statehood. And, and there was 500 villages, and uh, they were destroyed, and people left, and many of them were where those kibbutzim are uh, in the south. So I think th th that's another factor that we have to take into consideration, and it, it raises the question of, you know, where uh, where do you make a distinction between uh, ordinary Israelis, uh, people in the reserve forces, people in the active uh, military? The problem is our our battle is with the Zionist movement and Israel, which has done what it has done to us, and, and we're resisting uh, and, and fighting back. But even in the heat of battle, you get human, you know, decency uh, shown by, uh, by both sides, because we are both humans and we are decent, but we are also in a, in a state of active, violent warfare that's been going on for almost a century, not, yeah, about a century, because really the fighting in Palestine between Jews and Palestinians uh, started around the late 1920s, is when it, 1929 was the big uh, first uh, uh, clashes in, in Palestine, and uh, ever since. So it's been almost a century that this war has been going on. So you can't analyze any of this stuff in isolation. You have to look at the deeper context, and at the same time, don't lose sight of the humanity 
uh, of both the, the Jewish people and the Palestinian people.